China, an economic powerhouse holding the world's largest foreign exchange reserves. By 2030, according to some estimates, it will overtake the U.S. as the world's largest economy. And with China's rise, speculation is mounting that the renminbi is set to become a global reserve currency. Financial centers such as Hong Kong, Singapore and London are making moves to become hubs for renminbi trading. Against this backdrop, the annual Singapore China Finance and Banking Forum at NUS drew on a panel of international experts to discuss the internationalization of the renminbi. My sense is that the currency is on its way, but financial market development again being the critical characteristic, I think it's going to take a while. Over the next 10 years or so, the capital account is going to become a lot more open and in addition, we're going to have the Chinese currency become an important reserve currency, eroding, but almost certainly not displacing the dollar's dominance. Among the speakers at the forum was Dr. Cao Yuanzheng, chief economist of the Bank of China, a man whose job gives him a deep inside knowledge of the Chinese system. Speaking with Dr. Cao after the forum, I began by asking him about his views on the process of internationalizing the currency. You see, in China, we put this item into a, what, what I said, cross-border use. And, uh, you know, for the cross-border use, it's introduced three years ago. Uh, at that time, they said, this is the, in order to meet the need of the region's uh, demand for trade. Since at, uh, at that time, the financial crisis uh, just occurred, and Asian countries suffered from that, number one, you know. The liquidity of the U.S. dollars is not enough. Number two, the U.S. dollars, uh, you know, the rate, exchange rate, fluctuated very much. Is it safe to say that the Chinese government views this idea of internationalization of the currency differently than the outside yeah. world? What, what would you think would be the main difference that they would say? For the international use of renminbi, international currency, they must, you know, uh, have some what we call the preconditions. Number one, let me be fully convertible. Okay. Number two, uh, Chinese uh, should run in deficit, no matter capital account or current account. Number third, uh, you know, they need a very strong uh, capital market and financial market. Maybe the uh, the process at the end, China renminbi will be a reserve currency, but at present we do not have such ambitious aim. 25 or 30 years ago, let's face it, nobody was really counting on the renminbi to, to be uh, that strong or that kind of a reserve currency. Are, is it surprised you how fast this discussion has moved forward? Very, very fast. Mm. You know, just a mission, we do not have such kind of intention. That is the very ambitious <laughs> uh, goal for us. You know, at the present, we just talk about how to open the capital account. Maybe as a result, some countries, especially Asia countries, take renminbi as the reserve. But that is now not our intention. And uh, if these countries, you know, uh, make the renminbi as the reserve, maybe it causes a lot of problem for China. There's been so much talk, especially in North America and the United States, you know, how China must float the renminbi and, and must uh, see more parity uh, in, in the value of it. When those discussions come up, and many times they're in the course of politics in the United States, but when those discussions come up, what is the internal feeling or dialogue about that within China? We know this idea, and we think, you know, for market-oriented reform, uh, at the end, renminbi must be floating. The exchange rate must be uh, priced by the market. But you know, we may be a little bit longer. We need a step-by-step. You know, at the present, uh, we think the time is there. Uh, you can see uh, now the renminbi uh, get more room for fluctuation. So that is the um, something um, uh, like you know manage the flo floating exchange rate. Asked about the time frame for when there would be a free float of the currency. Dr. Cao said it could happen when the capital account is fully open. That, he says, will likely take another five to eight years. During our discussion, Dr. Cao made an important point about the onshore versus offshore market for the renminbi. 
offshore market is more developed than the yeah. onshore market. Okay. So let, uh, let's think about that, uh, that thing. We do not introduce China assets into the offshore market, but we open the onshore market, let offshore market back to onshore. That is the Shanghai Financial Center's idea. He added that the function of Hong Kong's offshore market is to act as a platform for experiments. Then take the new instruments, new products and new management and introduce them into the Chinese market. As more of these products are brought onto the mainland, the difference between onshore and offshore markets would eventually disappear. What reforms need to take place in the Chinese financial sector to, to affect some of these changes you're talking about? The final aim is uh, let the uh, interest rate marketized, let the uh, interest, uh, exchange rate marketized, and uh, during this competition, let the Chinese uh, financial institutions be competitiveness. That's the aim. And uh, the side effect, a uh, side result is the renminbi international use. For NUS Business School, I'm Glenn Van Zutphen. Used outside.